So the 80% loan to cost bridge debt is dried up. Gino, what do we do now? Everybody, Jake and Gino here, and today we're discussing what to do now that the cheap bridge debt of 2021 has dried up. Gang, we saw high demand for multifamily in 2021. The cheap bridge debt was a huge factor in driving up the asset prices. Syndicators were acquiring properties with low interest rate, non-recourse, 80% loan-to-cost bridge debt in hopes of riding the historic rental wave increases that we've seen across the board. Now, Fannie and Freddie we're requiring 65 to 70% LTV loan to value on these same deals. So groups were opting for the short-term bridge debt as an alternative financing option. Now, Gino, myself, we lost many deals to groups that were willing to take the higher price per unit and utilize these bridge programs to secure the deal. Gino, first off, welcome back from Hawaii, sir. How you doing? Jake. Doing great today, and big shout out to Vince Gethings and Duran Barrera. They had an awesome event this past week in Hawaii, Millionaire Mindset. And, and for everyone out there, you need to go out to these events. Uh, there's over 200 investors out there, and Jake and I are having an event November 5th and 6th in Orlando, the financial vacation for smart people. And what did I learn about this event? I actually sat next to a billionaire on Saturday night, sat next to him at the VIP. It's all about access. It's all about networking. It's all about learning what's going on in the current market. I was actually speaking to him about his family, getting to know him real better, made a great connection. I enjoyed myself. The networking, the ability to create these relationships. And like I said, I was a speaker at the event and I got to meet a lot of amazing people out there. A lot of military who are retiring. They're, they're getting out of the military. They want to start another career. So for all of you out there, once again, I stress Go to these events. This is how you start building your portfolio. This is how you start learning about bridge debt and about what's going on in the market right now, getting out there and getting face to face. My question specifically for you, mm -hmm. G Papa Funk, with what everything I just said, what are some alternative options to Fannie and Freddie at the 65 to 70% loan to value? Because that's, you know, that's a lot of money out of pocket. So what can investors do now that bridge is not as viable an option? G. As you know, we started out our career in community bank financing. And I know a lot of investors out there are going to go, oh, recourse debt. Well, when Jake and Gino started out, we had lint in our pockets. <laughs> we weren't losing anything because we didn't have anything. We were you know, able to say, we were hey. the risk, right? <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it seems like we still are the risk, but that's, that's another podcast. I think just go to a community bank. I mean, go out there. There's credit unions as well. Credit unions have just popped up. That's what I love about capitalism. Because when there's a void in the market, all of a sudden, other things start appearing. Credit unions are not banks. They're not for profit. But they say, hmm, let me get some of that action going on. They'll give you 30-year AMs. They'll give you nice interest rates. Now, read the fine print with credit unions because there's a lot of fine print going on there. They are not banks. So go out and make sure you read the fine print. But with what I like about community banks, Jake and I started out with the community bank. And we use them as a quote-unquote bridge to the agencies or as Jake and I like to say, the bridge to refining back to community, which has allowed us to refine over $25 million from our portfolio. You start out, what I like about community banks, they're easy to use. They like multifamily for the most part. If you can find one, our community bank loves multifamily. They understand the asset. So you go out and network with these community banks. They have favorable terms because at this point, they're starting to compete with Freddie SBLs and they're starting to compete. They want those demand deposits. There's another podcast that I did I'm in the how-tos talking about banking and why banks don't want multifamily. They just want to continue to lend out money. When they can multiply that money, it's the fractional banking, it's called. So go out there and look for those community banks. And you know what? There's a couple of things that I tell my students. They're going to push back with 20-year amortizations. Get the 25-year amortization. Now, all of a sudden, when Jake and Gino started out, there was no interest only on community banks. Now, guess what? They will give interest only. And another component Loan to cost. When we started out, there were no loan to cost loans. They weren't loaning on the renovations of a property. Well, now they are doing that as well. They're trying to compete. Now, the only thing in this part of the cycle right now, interest rates are a little bit higher. 
than what Fannie and Freddie are doing because they price interest rates differently. Fannie and Freddie price on the 10-year treasury. Community banks, they price a little bit differently. All that being said, go out and take a look at community banks. Go out and take a look at credit unions. Those are two really viable, amazing options. I know people talk about hard money and private money. Those are smaller multifamily deals when you're looking at the two to $3 million. Possibly you can utilize that. I mean, if you're going out there and raising capital, hey, if, you, if you've got wealthy people and they've got money in self-directed IRAs, that may be a way for you to start raising capital for smaller multifamilies. But as I said, that community is what we call a bridge because you're going to get a five or a seven year term on it. If you're repositioning a property, it gives you enough time to reposition that property and you're able to refinance uh, back into a community or back into an agency product. Yeah. And I think there's, there's three main issues with the community banks. Number one on the front end is trust. We've had community banks until you develop that relationship and you know you can trust the bank. There can be trust issues where you get to the finish line or you're three feet from gold and they switch the goalpost. So make sure you're shopping multiple you know, local banks initially. So if they do try to pull the rug out, you have a backup. Now, once you develop that rapport, you set expectations and you, you know you can trust the bank and you can be counted on, that's a different story. But in the beginning, that's one thing to watch out for. The second one Gino alluded to, the rates typically are higher, okay? So you may have a higher interest rate, but again, if you're using it for loan to cost, that is going to be short term. And Gino alluded to the point that these are recourse loans. So get a good relationship with a local bank who you want to grow with, okay? If they're on their come up and they're growing, you're going to be able to grow with them. 80% loan to cost is very viable. We do it all the time with our community bank. But again, expect 25-year AMs, and we like to see two years IO out of them minimum. And the big question, are you okay with recourse debt? I think that's the biggest thing for a lot of folks, especially if you're syndicating, are you going to be able to pull that off? But if you want to continue to be able to go in and reposition these deals with low leverage, getting the rental baked into it, we really believe that community banks are a viable option. Term sheets. One big word that Jake said, go out there and yes. get a term sheet from the bank. That means they're going to lay out all the terms that they're proposing to you. Now, it's almost like a letter of intent. This is what the letter, this is what our intention is to give to you. But what I'd like to say and follow up what Jake said, make sure you get a couple of term sheets from a couple of different community banks and pit them up one against the other, especially if you're first starting out. You want to make sure you have options out there. Yep. And how do you meet these bankers? You come to Multifamily Mastery 5, November 5th and 6th in Orlando. It's the financial vacation for smart people, gang. And always, we believe in buying deals with the ability to hold the deal for the long term. Think in decades. I'm Jake. He's the G-Daddy. We make it happen. We'll see you next time.